All right, and we're back. This is gonna be a little fucky. All right, so this is the Futurama section, which, I'm... by the way, I think this predated Futurama the show. I could be wrong and I don't really care. So this is the most useless gadget in the game, the RC car. It kind of sucks ass. Um, it controls decently, but Ape Escape 2 actually has three different kinds of RC cars. Am I right? No, it's four. There's the vanilla one, then there's the sushi one, the black one, and then there's the pudding one. Um, you guys have no idea what I'm fucking talking about. That's okay. But, ugh. That is so loud. I hope it's not super ear deafening for you guys. But, um... I'm not a huge fan of it. This is actually my least favorite level I'm going for it. in the entire game. I think this is absolutely, without a doubt, my least favorite level for a lot of reasons. Number one, the music doesn't start up immediately. That's already a huge... You cunt muffin. All right, there we go. Anyways, um, we have to use the RC car, which I just don't like. It... It's such a finicky fucking gadget to use. Like, when I was a kid, it was cool. I was like, oh, cool, there's like a little RC car you can play with. As an adult, I'm like, eh, it's kind of shitty. It can pick up things, like health and coins, whatever you want to call them. I think they're called chips. Um, but other than that, it's just shit, dude. I don't like it. Fucking asshole. Fuck bees. Anyways. This monkey can beat the shit out of you really easily. Case in point. I believe in Ape Escape 2, the gray monkeys... Because, yeah, I think they're just called white pant monkeys in this game, but in that one, uh, they have, like, just bullshit. Um, if I remember correctly, they... Bo no, red ones are the boxer ones, I'm pretty sure. The uh, white monkeys are blind, that's right. If I remember it correctly, they have really bad eyesight at least. So also this thing right here, that thing gave me fucking nightmares, dude. Look at this fucking thing. I don't like that. I'm not even gonna fight it. I'm not even gonna bother with it. I'm using the strategy you use in a fucking time trial for this area, but that's okay. You're not missing much. There's also that fucking asshole shooting at you the entire time. So also get ready for some edgy shit Kids! If you open up the game file on, like, the CD, that's what some of them are named, I'm pretty sure. It's like Kids 2 or some shit like that. I'm like, I don't want to know. Someone probably thought it was really edgy and cool, but as an adult, I'm like, this did not age well. Everyone says that the 90s were dark and edgy, and I'm like, excuse me, have you seen the 2000s? Uh, do you not know what edge looks like? Oh, fucking please don't. There we go. So, this is another reason why I don't like the RC car. I might fucking die here. I really don't want to. This part's easy to die on, too. It's another reason I don't like this area. It's also just... It's just not well designed. Also, see, this is what I mean. Like, this is the puzzle. You push the ape out the thing, and then he sometimes hits the thing, and then he just wanders back and forth. And sometimes you can actually scare them out of these without actually trying. It's not easy, though. You see what I mean? I don't like these. This is just... I mean, it controls fine. I'm not going to say it controls poorly, because it actually is fine. But having to switch to the fucking thing back and forth over and over, it does stay in place if you switch to a different gadget while it's not equipped, so it's not a bad thing, and it can be used to push switches down, so it's actually not terrible, but it's just... Ugh. I don't like it. See, shit like this, it's interesting, because you go, oh, I can't do that, but then it's like, oh, look, there's the there's the thing. I, I just don't think that's a very interesting puzzle. It would be cooler if it was implemented better, I think, is my problem. So this part... Oh, man, when I was a kid, this scared me so bad. So you can pick things up with the car, so you gotta be a little bit careful. I used to have to do this in... Mm, there's a little bit of oversteer, by the way. I haven't even mentioned this yet. That's why it's a little finicky. Didn't say the controls were perfect. 
There we go. So, when you're doing this as a kid, this was horrible. Like, I just remember crying when that thing would fuck. Yeah, when that thing would fuck totally. God dicking damn it! Come on, man. Um. Anyways, I would just fucking cry because I couldn't do it. I was like, it's too fucking hard. I can't get the coin. It's impossible. Rest in pepperoni. I want my Kool-Aid jammer. I don't, I don't think I did that. I loved Kool-Aid, though, when I was a kid. And then I got older and I fucking just tested it. I had a friend. I know, it's amazing. Um, who, his parents like, lived off of fucking Kool-Aid. And every time we went over to, like, hang out, his parents had, like, five fucking... I'm not even exaggerating. It was, like, five fucking pictures of Kool-Aid. All right, by the way, you have to do this to get one of the monkeys. Um, you, this will not kill you, I promise. Um, but, yeah, th they only drank Kool-Aid. And this is a reason. Because the water they had smelled like dead animal. It was just this putrid fucking... It smelled like sulfur, if I'm being honest. And some people go, oh, it's fine, you just run the water for... Yeah, 20 years of running the water and it still smells like shit? That's called a plumbing issue. That's uh, a little bit different, or a poisoned water supply. So, mind you, I kind of grew out of sugar as I got older. I also can't process sugar properly. I'm not diabetic, I just can't really eat it. Um, oh fucking hell, I don't know, maybe I am diabetic. <laughs> but, um, anyways, you know, like, so, I don't really like sugar at this point in my life, because I'm getting older, I'm like, eh, I, 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 have, I like bitter food, I like bitter tasting drinks, so, but, I'm not trying to sound cruel, but yeah, I was poor. I mean, I drank, like, Kool-Aid and shit too, but... Not because we were poor, but it's just, it was cheap and everyone had it, right? So I was used to normal Kool-Aid. You know, God-intended Kool-Aid, okay? This water, smelling like absolute fucking rotted fecal matter and like, gross. Coupled with the fact that it really didn't get cold, and their house had no AC. A lot of people I knew didn't have AC either. I didn't have AC for a while too. But, um... Because I grew up in the middle of fucking nowhere, this was nothing to me. I'm like, oh wow, fucking rich people, they have fucking AC. Um, God. Oh no! You gotta be fucking me dead, that was like the worst shit that could possibly happen. After all that struggle, too. Anyways, so... They would, you know, they'd make Kool-Aid, like five fucking pitchers of Kool-Aid. Because you're still thirsty, you're gonna get hot. But they put like three cups of fucking sugar. You're supposed to use one, one cup of sugar for a packet of Kool-Aid. That's the that's the the standard you know equivalency of like Kool-Aid. Okay, God intended one packet of Kool-Aid, two gallons or whatever, one gallon quart, whatever fucking wizard measurements we use in America, and like you know that was it. That's 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 sweet enough. Okay. Three cups of sugar. I'm not exaggerating. I watched his mom and dad and everyone else make it numerous times. Three cups of sugar with this ass smelling and tasting. It tasted disgusting. Lukewarm fucking water. And it was humid or hot. And we'd all hang out and play RuneScape naked because we were just bros, right? And, you know, that, that environment makes you fucking hate Kool-Aid. Like, real quick. Like... And they only drank two kinds of Kool-Aid. Yes! It was blue raspberry and green apple Kool-Aid. Now, I like me my green apple. I like me my blue raspberry. Do I like green apple that tastes like expired omelet? No. I want crisp, clean green apple. Also with some tang. Not some fucking, you know, you just stuck your mouth in a goddamn sugar factory. It was disgusting. I could not stand Kool-Aid. To this day, I cannot drink Kool-Aid because that... Well, number one... Let's go! I'll get really fucking sick. Um, anybody who knows me in person has probably experienced me get, like, ill from eating, like, a donut. And I just go, fuck it, I'm just gonna eat a donut. I want one. Um, this is so fucking hard. Yes! Yes! Oh! 
Perfect. That is the best way to do that, by the way. Um, and I'll have to do that later on anyways. You'll see what I'm talking about. Anyways, so like, we drank Kool-Aid, okay? A lot. I fucking loved Kool-Aid until I started hanging out with this kid. Okay, this... This made me hate Kool-Aid. And they didn't drink iced tea. I mean, we were both poor people. Like, we didn't have a lot of money in our family or anything like that. It's not like tea is expensive either. Like, I'm talking just like some fucking basic ass Lipton iced tea. That's very inexpensive. It's actually cheaper than most coffee. Um, if you've ever had coffee brewed out of water like this, you'll you'll probably understand why. Oh god, dude, taste and smell. Like those. Don't do it. Ah, oh, you fucker. You can hit him before he does that. You can sometimes cheese that. But we'll get into it later. I can probably kill him quick enough. Come on. I have more damage. Come on, baby. Or not. That's cool. Uh, I should be able to do this with a, a big boy shot. Yeah, I think I'm doing it. Okay, I'm not doing it. All I have to do is the old-fashioned way and just reset him. But, um, trust me, dude. When you've had, like, that much sugar in your body, like, when it's that hot, it just makes you sick. It really does. Yes! No! Fuck! Oh, you asshole. Anyways, I am cocking this up. This is what I get for talking about Kool-Aid. If I had a preference? Dude, fucking cherry Kool-Aid all day. Like, cherry Kool-Aid, green apple Kool-Aid, and blue raspberry if you're really... You have got to be fucking kidding me. Why is this so goddamn awkward? It's because I lost the fucking tank and I'm a little pissy because that really makes this a lot easier. This is the dumb scumbag way of doing it. Don't do what I'm doing at all, okay? There. Fuck, that was awful. Um, anyways. I don't really need that much health. I might die in the next monkey because it's a green monkey we're catching next and he's a real bitch. But anyways, yeah, when you... When you've had Kool-Aid like that, you never want it ever again. You know, but... Oh man, the smell of cherry Kool-Aid in the packet. It is heaven. I fucking love that smell. That is absolutely one of my favorite things on the I don't care how fucking unnatural Kool-Aid is. Oh no! Oh no, we've opened up a file. Okay, there we go. Um... It's that damn button on my controller. It's really not fun. Um... But yeah, I don't care how fake it is. I can't drink it anymore, but... God damn, do I miss that smell. That is one of my favorite things ever. I didn't like uh, Kool-Aid when I was really little because my mom didn't like it, so she didn't buy it. My dad loved Pepsi, but I can't stand Pepsi. When I was a kid, oh, fucking shitbag. Um, so when I was a kid, I'm just going to chalk this up to being the RC car's fault. I'm probably going to die, all things considered, as well. But, um... Oh, my God. Oh, you got fucking shitting me, man. I hate this part. This is my least favorite section in the entire game. This might be my least favorite level, actually, now that I think about it. It's not hard. It's just the controls on the oversteer. When it lands, it still skids. And it does carry some momentum. Not much, but it does have some. There we go. I might die on the monkey, and that's going to be the absolute fucking worst shit ever if that happens. So, don't hate me if I do. Come on. Oh my god, how am I gonna... Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm dead. Oh god! Oh. Okay, I'm gonna let him reset. Alright, just calm down. Uh, this is scaring me right now. This is the ultimate horror movie. Okay. I'm scared shitless right now. You know what would help? This. <sighs> 
That is how you do it. Anyways. But yeah, when when my mom would get Kool-Aid, she'd usually get like grape, cherry, green apple. But man, when you've had those flavors ruined, it's like when you go over to a friend's house and their mom or dad makes something that's really shitty that you actually really like. Or it's even worse when your friend's parents make something that you actually like better than your parents. My, that same friend I was just talking about, his mom made the best enchiladas, and they were ultra white people enchiladas, by the way. Um, they were made with canned queso. Like, you gotta use canned queso, first of all. This is, that was the sauce, basically, with, um, oh my god, it's making me hungry thinking about it. Um, with, like, just, you know, cheddar, because... All of us had cheddar cheese. It was just what we had. And, um... What else? Olives and fucking chicken, and it was so fucking good, dude. I... Oh, and she made the best clam chowder ever. She actually... Oh, and here's the other thing. She made... The reason I'd also say they're ultra-white people enchiladas is because they were made with flour tortillas, and anybody who's worth their salt who's cooked anything Hispanic, flour tortillas for enchiladas? Fucking really? Um... But yeah, they were so good, dude. I have dreams about those things. They were so good. <sighs> so hungry right now. Um, but, oh, this is bad. I might die. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> Drop health. Oh, you bitch. Anyways. There we go. Um, but no, she made the best clam chowder. And that's crazy, because I actually really don't like clam chowder at all. Um, what she did that was slightly different was she'd make it with chicken stock rather than seafood stock. I'm thinking that's how you make it. I haven't made clam chowder from scratch in like 20 years, literally. Oh, fuck. I, I don't know how I messed that up. I guess I got too distracted with my friend's mom in my mind. Um, but yeah, it was so good, dude. Like, I'm not even exaggerating. Like, it was fucking the best. It was so good. And shit, man! What the fuck is up with this episode? I am just cocking it all up over the place. And if I fall, I'm gonna die. That's just even worse. I I will profess... I... profess? I will confess I don't like this level. Um, and I don't like this section of the game. So, that might have something to do with it. Oh, no! What the fuck was all that about? I'm dead serious. Why was it so sensitive, but then it just worked like a dream? I don't understand. Anyways. But yeah, she made it, like, more... Fucking... Cox... I don't even have an insult ready yet. Jesus Christ. Anyways. She made it more brothy than, like, creamy, which I prefer. Like, I don't like creamy soup. I prefer a nice broth. I like to taste the soup. I don't want to taste fucking... A shitload of bullshit. Yeah, a shitload of bullshit. My favorite cooking ingredient. Um, but yeah, trust me, dude. I, I loved it. It was so good. And, you know, I don't like clams all that much. They're okay. They're a little bit like bubblegum of the ocean, so I'm a little bit hesitant on them sometimes. But it was good. I, I really did enjoy some of the shit she made. She also made a really, really good meatloaf. Um... She did a really weird thing that I've never seen anybody else do. She used to break up little packs of ramen noodles into them and kind of use that for filler. Some people use oatmeal. Um, but yeah, she used ramen noodles for it. And it had this weird... I don't know, it, it didn't... You, you might be thinking that's gross, but... I mean, it's, it's actually really good. But I don't cook with ramen. I actually don't like top ramen at all. I... You know, even though I was really poor, as in we grew almost 80% of what we ate, um, people probably don't know that about me, but I did. I grew up relatively, like, poor. And I don't mean that, like, it's a 
good thing. It's just, you know, I, I understand what, like, quality food is and what, like, homegrown food is and that I much prefer homegrown stuff than stuff like, you know, Stouffer's or whatever. So, to me, it's funny because everyone associates being poor with eating Top Ramen and stuff, but to me it was weird because I grew up eating, like, vegetables that we grew and, like, deer that we harvested and stuff like that. Like, so it really was, like, never a thing I ate. I just, I don't really like Top Ramen to start with. It just kind of tastes like a shitload of salt with no flavor. And I'm well aware that everybody likes their fucking, their ramen, their anime spaghetti, you know, whatever. Me, personally, I'm like, dude, it's just noodles and some soup. It's not that good. It's just, okay. Ooh, it's got a fucking, like, soy fermented egg on top. Ooh. I'm shaking in my boots. Yes. I don't know, man. I just, I never got into ramen. I have a lot of weed friends, and you know who you are. But, um, it's like, I don't know, man, I just never got into ramen very much. It's just not very filling, and it's technically just street food, which is hilarious, because in America we fetishize other cultures' street food more than their actual cuisine. It's quite hilarious to me. But, um, it's like, to me, though, it's funny that I make, like, pisole from scratch, and, uh, people are like, you make that, all like, once a month? I'm like, yeah. I love the soul. Like, we make that like once a year, and I'm like, oh, I guess. So there's a monkey over there we can't get to. This is my favorite track in the entire game, by the way. This is the best song in the entire game. You'll see why in a second. God damn it. Oh, just layer it in already, game. Fuck. There we go. Well, you'll hear it in a moment. It's a really badass synth guitar that I just think is so fucking cool. That. That just... Isn't that fucking cool? I love that. That is the coolest soundtrack in the entire game. I think it might be one of my favorite, like, you know, just soundtracks of all time. It's so fucking good. Like, oh, it's so satisfying. So, anyways, this is TV Tower. This is kind of like a more, you know, traditional linear fashion version of the, uh, like, medieval one we did where we had to try and find Spectre again. But uh, this one is a much more streamlined version of that. So there's some exploration, but not a whole lot. So first things first, this monkey is a little dumb. So, oh, come on. You'd think you could be able to do this. What the hell? He didn't do that the first time I played it. Okay, my test playthrough, he just looked at me like, oh, whatever, man. Uh, that was weird. So, okay, I thought you could do that. At least I was correct. Um, oh, dicks. This is an iffy jump. There we go. So this level is pretty good. I, I quite like this one a lot. This is one of my favorite levels in the game. Probably because of the music, if I'm being honest. Oh, you're shitting me. Really? Oh, well, we'll get it on the way back. That's fine. I will say one thing this game doesn't do well, narrow platforming. You're a little too stiff for that, but Ape Escape 2 kind of balances that out a little bit better. So you, you can shoot him down... Oh my god. You can shoot him down with the uh, slingback shooter, or I guess you can ass slam him. Oh my god. There we go. That is just been fucking getting me every single time. You might be like, just slow down. No! We're doing this the way God intended. Not the way... Uh... I don't know. Those things remind me so much of the, uh... The spotlight enemies from Crash 2. If you've ever played that game, you know what I'm talking about. They're the... The ones that float around like UFOs. What? The fuck? 
I don't know if you can actually kill those. I've never actually been bothered to find out either. I'm assuming you can, because it's an enemy in this game, so it probably can die. Alright. We'll do this the old-fashioned way. Man, when I was a kid, doing shit like this was just nerve-wracking. This is how I used to play this game. Because analog controls were very finicky back then to me. So I was really uncomfortable doing it, so I took everything way slower. One of the reasons I actually speedrun games now, while well, as a kid I did it, if I could. It wasn't graceful, by the way, but... You know, the reason I did it as a kid... You... Oh, no! That's fine. We're gonna go to the end of the area anyways. Whatever. I'm not 100% sure why that shit's just so fucking accurate, but it is. You should use the slingback shooter, but I'm just not smart enough to do that, so whatever. Uh, anyways. Yeah, when I was a kid, the reason I played games quickly was because I just wanted to have more time to play it. Like, my parents gave me, like, 30 minutes. Jesus Christ. 30 minutes! to play a game usually. That was it. And I had to go outside or do something else. So when I was a kid, playing a game quickly meant I had more time to play the game technically. So learning to do stuff really quickly like that was essential to me as a kid. I also did my homework and stuff very quickly. Um, but here's the thing. I never ran into like, you know, oh, you work too quickly, you'll make mistakes. That never happened. I genuinely, as a kid, as an adult, I don't have this issue either. Jesus, fuck. God. Why? Why are you being such a... Anyways. Yeah, when I was a kid, my teachers were always concerned that I was doing my work too quickly. They actually at one point thought I had ADD, which I don't. I just had like... I process information quickly, and I can deal with it quickly, I guess. Which is astounding, because I have such massive stress problems as an adult. But when I was a kid, I I could do, like, everything really quickly, and they didn't, you know, think that was good. Until I got to probably middle school, was when teachers stopped giving a shit about it. Like, oh, you finished your work? Cool, read a book. And, um... Yeah, that was just what teachers did when I was in school. They were like, ah, you're fucking done with your work, uh, read a book. I was crazy and just wrote instead. Like, I wrote little stories and shit. I'm actually a writer, but, like, that was one of the reasons I used to do my schoolwork quickly, was to just, you know, I didn't want to have to take time away from my precious ape escape time, goddammit. This is me time, okay? This is what we're all about, okay? We're gonna do the hokey pokey, what it's all about. Um... And the tank, by the way, I haven't even talked about the tank. The tank controls with both sticks, and it's actually very fluid. But, um, I don't have any issues with it. Um, but yeah, it was fun when I was a kid, because the one thing I remember I was really good at, I don't know if anyone remembers this, and so when they're having you practice your times table, they give you a bunch of randomly generated, like, questions. Well, they give the whole class the whole thing, you know what I mean? Um, it'd be like 50... I think it was 50 or 25 or something like that generated questions. And um, I loved doing that when I was a kid. Like, I just kicked ass at that. It was ridiculous. I was really good at multiplication. Um, as an adult, my brain is so fried from years of stress and, like, trauma. I have such an issue trying to remember numbers and names. The two things I cannot remember for the life of me. Well, I mean, if I'm getting threatened by somebody, I'm pretty sure I'll remember a number and a name, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, when I was a kid, I I could totally just fucking whiz-bang math out. It was unbelievable. Like, and then I just sort of sucked ass at math as a kid later on. My parents thought I was dyslexic. They're like, uh, well, your relative blah 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 has dyslexia. These things are so fucking cute. Um... Maybe you have dyslexia. No, don't have dyslexia, just bad at math. And then... That was the thing. So I actually had to take, you know, my SAT, so... Even though you guys are like, oh wow, what is Seth's uh, former education like? Non-existent. Um, I actually was gonna be an ESL teacher. I was gonna go teach in Mexico. Um, but I didn't do that, obviously. I... 
I said college is a bad idea and I don't need to do it. Uh, nothing I do in my interests or hobbies requires a college education, so there's no point. And I'm very glad, especially considering what happened with the pandemic and everything, um, and the fact that, you know, college isn't 100% necessary for everybody. Um, but it was ridiculous because I had to take my SAT. God. Yeah! Fucking got him. Um, anyways. So I had to take my SAT and my PSAT because I, I actually applied for college, that's the thing. I had a schedule set up and everything and I just said, nah, fuck this, I'm not doing it. Because it wasn't my, my idea, it was my parents and everyone else around me's idea. So when I was doing that, I had to take the PSAT in junior year and then the SAT Actually, I think the PSAT was required in one of my classes. They, they really crammed college education down our throats. Um, and I took the SAT, and thank God I didn't have to pay for it. My parents did. Probably a bad idea in hindsight. But um, I took it. Lo and behold, what do you think my results came back as? Excels in English. Excels in writing. Excels in science. Poor in math. I also had a very bad math teacher. Um, so, I love talking about this. Um, it's a very... You can be like, oh, it's just a lazy millennials. That's why you're just bad at things. It's like, no, the teacher that I had literally just handed us a worksheet every single day in high school I'm talking about by, right now. So, this is how it worked. I can remember this because this pissed me off every single day because people thought I was just lazy. I'm like, no, I'm not lazy, it's the grading system. Um, so homework was worth two points. Five days a week you had homework. Homework was sequential to the test, right? There was a quiz sometimes every week, and then there was a test at the end of all of this, right? So. The test was worth 50 to 75 points, and it was every single week. Now you're probably thinking, that doesn't sound so bad. Every single week, dude, really? Every single week. And here's the problem, the test and the learning material was sequential. So if you didn't grasp one concept, it didn't matter. You were just fucked. And here's the other problem. Homework was worth two points. Homework was every single night, five days a week. No joke, it was rare to not get homework in this class. It was every single day. There was the assignment, well, you took notes, and then there was the assignment, and that was it. So, that was all we had, right? Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Homework was worth two points. One point was for completion, the other point was on time. It was not accuracy-based. It was 100% if you just did it. So, can you imagine what that was like? If you fail the test, you fucked it. That was all there was. You could retake the test, but for half point. And so at that point, the actual, like, material? Did I miss a monkey? I heard a noise. <gasps> no, wait, it was in that room. It might... Wait a minute. Why did it make the noise? I heard it. I'm not losing my mind. Anyways... So yeah, let that sink in. The test was the only thing that mattered. Requirement to turn in your assignment? You didn't have to do that. No, it was pointless. Even if it was late, it was only worth, like, a quarter of your grade. Not even that. And doing all the homework didn't make your grade go better. It just meant you were there. Participatory stuff. It's pointless. Oh, Spike! Spike! <laughs> Professor! Natalie! I'm here! Don't worry! I'll get you out of here! Oh no you don't! I still need them to help me! So they're not going anywhere! Ah! You're really starting to bug me! I'll never cooperate with you, Spectre. Yeah! And when we get out of here, you'll be sorry! Take them away! Yes. Stop it! Let go of us! Hey, look at us! Oh, Snap no. out of it! Let him go! 
Now you really made me mad. It's time to get rid of you once and for all. I like that little touch there, actually. So this fight's easy. I'll I'll keep bitching about like school. Um, See, so yeah, I let that sink in. Like it didn't matter if you did the homework. It didn't matter if you showed up to the class. So long as you did the test in a half-assed fashion, you were fine. That's it. That's all that mattered. That is awful teaching. And I had this teacher for three fucking years. Because I just couldn't get a break. And here's the problem. I failed uh, geometry my sophomore year because I had um, H1N1. And that fucking... Oh, dude, that was brutal. Um, I nearly died from it. I missed two months of school. So... Can you imagine what happens when you don't do two months of curriculum and you can't pass the test properly because you don't... And it was sequential. You never had, like, okay, today we're doing exponents and then exponents part two of it, exponents whatever. No, it was day one, exponents part one, then exponents part two, exponents part three, then it was moving on. That was it. That's great if you're trying to speed run fucking math, but it's not great when you're actually trying to learn things because you don't have time to actually process it. Like, I don't, like, disbelieve that some people can learn that quickly, but believe me, when all the kids in the class were just as fucking confused half the time as I was, that's not a good sign. So, that to me was just the ultimate fuck you to your education, basically. Like, you were just like, oh, I'll just do the test and that's all that matters. Like, you didn't even have to fucking, like, show up to class. If you had a basic concept of the idea, you were fine. But if you didn't understand one part, like, let's say logarithms, okay? If you didn't get the logarithm section, tough shit. You have to either get tutoring or stay after class and do whatever and waste more of your time. That is awful. That is a fucking terrible system. I'm sorry. The teacher herself as a person was fine, but holy shit, dude. That is not how you teach kids. Like, at all. And if you're curious, I actually taught creative writing, and you know what I did? I built up slowly concepts that would work over time. So it's like... There's, there's a big difference there, you know what I mean? So yeah, math was shit, dude. I'm awful at math. Like, already, so that just didn't help at all. Also, if I mention this boss fight's really piss easy. That was it. it was a tough boss. Hmm. Well done. I am impressed. I can't believe you made it this far. That's right. I won't be beaten by you. Now return all my friends. I'm not, I'm not giving, giving up, up that, that easily. easily. Hmm. I just, I just had, had another brilliant thought. thought. So, so I have I to run, run now, now, but I'll, I'll see you later. later. You, you can, can be sure, sure of that. that. See ya! Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Wait! What did he expect him to do? <laughs> yes! Yeah, that's, uh, that's my math rant over. I don't even want to think about that. That just makes me angry. I just hope you guys get it, that it was like one thing every single day and that was it. And it was quizzed and then compounded and then moved on as fast as humanly possible. That is horrible for education. Well, I didn't go to school to be a teacher, so I can't fix it, so I can't complain, right? Yeah. Exactly. I'll see you guys in the next one.